Welcome to this second video which will be a continuation of the prime properties with the CSS styling case study. And I'll give a quick recall to this. If you haven't watched the first video, you probably need to do that first. I've shown you the difference between what the previous chapter's prime properties case study looked like with the white background and what it will look like with the yellow background and green letters, etc. when the cascading style sheets are placed on it and applied to the page. We ended up creating a page called prime.css. Sorry for the noise. I have to do this when I'm going across multiple screens. In this prime.css file, we have the definitions that will override whatever is in the regular web pages with the regular tags. And they're all done by naming the particular element, which in this case is body or the word header or whatever we have here and we have the characteristics surrounded by the opening and closing braces. Be sure you're not using the square brackets but the curly braces. You can also define extra class, extra items called classes. One is called contact that is in one of your instructions and there will be one at the end of the whole assignment which I want to address right now and that one before we get into the actual pages and that one will be on let me get to my correct screen that will be on, and I'm getting the wrong files. I apologize, folks, that I'm looking at lots of distractions and interruptions as I'm trying to do this. So you may see some unexpected screens that will pop up, and if you do, just forgive me. On the very last page of your book, there's going to mention something about a wrapper class, which is very common in designing web pages. So when you look at that very last page in this particular recording it's task number five centering the page layout you'll do something called an ID wrapper that wraps or centers the code. It will show that for you and, and here it is it says add an ID style for a style rule I'll get this right in a minute for an ID called wrapper. Now IDs if you've done the assignment on my worksheets previously IDs always begin with a tic-tac-toe or pound or hashtag symbol and it says to set the width to 80, margin right automatic, and margin left automatic. To do that, we'll simply add this to our CSS file called Prime. And again, this is an ID, so it's going to start with a pound symbol. And we name it wrapper. Again, the definition will open, and we'll add this to the program in a few minutes. You're thinking maybe, well, I don't have wrapper in my previous assignment. And you don't, but you will have it. The definition they're asking for here is for the width to be 80%. So we just type in width colon 80%. End it with a semicolon. Remember the punctuation is important here. Margin right auto. And what this basically means is if you resize the web page or change the size of the window, it'll automatically line the margins up properly and margin left is very similar. You gotta spell it correctly. If you misspell something, let's say you misspell auto like this, the web page will attempt to render or show itself, but it may say, well, you misspelled this, I'm just going to ignore what you've requested. So it won't give you an error message like a lot of programming languages will, but it will say to you basically, I'm just not gonna do what you requested. So that's the wrapper class right there. And again, notice the difference with an ID, we use a pound symbol in front of it with a class you use a dot in front of it. If it's a definition that's built into the programming language like the DD tag, the description data, or the nav tag, or H2, we don't need any kind of dot or pound symbol in front of it. And of course you'll resave this page again as prime CSS. And again, you want to make sure, just a quick review for you, you want to make sure that this is always going to be in quotation marks so you override whatever WordPad, Notepad, or text editor you're using. Okay, let's go in and actually look at the web pages that you originally did, and I'm going to have to pull these up on my screen. Now, I'm going to pull these up in Word, and I want you to understand very clearly that I do not, I do not endorse Microsoft Word. You will have major problems, I mean it, if you insist on using Microsoft Word, but for me to be able to do this video is easier if I can work and draw around it. So what I'm going to do here, I've got my original previous chapter case study, the one hopefully you've already done, 
I'm going to try to make this a little bit larger. There's a trade-off when I'm doing a video where I might make it too big, too small. I'll do my best here to accommodate you, but again, I can't make a perfect video with five online classes. And again, nothing personal but a record number of emails and messages I'm having to handle this semester that's taking away some time, quite honestly. Right off the bat, for those of you who elected to leave this part out of your program, if you don't include this part in your computer program, in your web page, you absolutely will not be successful with your style sheet. What you have to do right off the bat, and I'm going in the book, and this is the original, this is not the new assignment that we're doing now, but it's the original from the previous chapter. Uh, again, bear with me so I can refer to these pages as I need to, so I can give you all these visuals that many of you need. If I go to the assignment in the book, and I'll start with what is called Task 3 in this case, Task 3 homepage, it says to add a link element to associate the web page with the prime external style sheet. In other words, the web page does not know to follow the instructions on our style sheet unless we tell it how. We do this by placing a statement, and it's in your book, it's very, very standard. It goes inside the head tag, so we're going to put that actual statement right in here, and I'll try to make some room for it. And it's a tag, I'll try to handwrite this, well, I'll actually type it to make it easier to see, and then I'll highlight it for you. You're going to have the word link, and the relationship equals style sheet in quotes. This is all very standard. You will do this every single time you use an external style sheet in a program. Now, the reference that we're going to use here, you're going to actually have something in quotes right here as well. This is your entire statement right here. <clears throat> and what you put inside the quotation marks is the name of the sheet. In our case, it's called prime.css. Now, Word's going to get up, jump up and down about it because it thinks it's a document. Please don't use Word, as I said, in this case. But this is the statement that you'll be typing in to this section of your program. And again, you have to bear with my computer because sometimes it gets a little stubborn when I'm trying to do this and create a video at the same time. It gets a little naughty on me. But that's the statement you have, and it's got to be put in between the head tags. And what gets confusing with students sometimes, there's head, there's header, and there's heading, and you have to distinguish among these. So we'll do this with both pages. That one is in the index page. And the way I personally know it's the index page, other than the fact that I have the file name in front of me, is I, I have the title right here that said Prime Properties. There's another one that's very similar to it. All right, we'll go with this one page first to avoid confusion. Let's go back to the book and see what it says. Again, I grabbed the wrong folder. I'm so sorry. You have to be patient with me because I'm dealing with a lot of distractions when I'm doing this. All right. It says to configure the navigation area. Remove the bold element, the B, from the navigation area. And basically what we'll do there is go to the nav section. And I'll scroll this up before you can see it. And you'll notice with the nav section, here's the nav section right here on our on our program. Here's the nav section in this area on this example. Now you'll notice, and I've got this scrunched together because I have to do this for video purposes. You'll notice that the word that the little bold tag is in here. I won't need bold anymore. And the reason I don't need bold anymore is because in the definition for the prime CSS style sheet, you'll notice that nav Again, my computer's trying to help me out with the size, folks. I'm, again, I'm battling a lot of demons right now, so thank you for bearing with me. And it keeps resizing on me. I'll try, I'm trying to do this to where it will not maximize on me. You'll notice that the nav right here has bold already built into it, so there's no sense in doing it twice. But what the computer's going to do when it has this style sheet attached to this web page or associated with it, it's going to take care of the bold for us. And that's the reason that the book says you don't need the bold to be in there now. So what we'll basically do for this new page is we'll just take the bold feature out of it. So I'll remove the bold by just taking, you got to make sure you remove 
all the tags, not just the bold tag, but the end tag that's associated with it. And it will be taken care of by the style sheet. The next instruction says to go to the div that contains the address. Now some of you went kind of crazy with div and you thought you had to have a div for everything. The reason that you have these particular tags such as header and nav and div and footer or stuff like that. If you look in your textbook, if you remember when this was done at the very beginning of the case, case study back in the previous chapter, you had something you had something called a wireframe. And that wireframe I'm looking for it in my book right now, you can't see this part. The wireframe actually had the header section right here. You're gonna to have to bear with my scribble. The nav section, a main section, and a footer section. And inside of main, there's a little area that's not written on there that's called div. What you can do is you can tell the computer, I want to put a particular style on this section, or I want to put a particular style on this section, or maybe I want something that styles the entire page. And that's what all this stuff is all about. So you can make these particular, you can fix this stuff, and the re, you might say, well, why don't I do it on just the web page? Why don't I just write the direct tags? Well, if I make a, an external style sheet like prime.css, then I can apply that to not only these pages, but any set of pages I have on any, any website I create. It's the power of the prime.css file being universal across all areas. And if you want to make a, a major change, instead of having to change it on two pages or 20 pages, you change it in a style sheet, and it zip, 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 just applies to everything else. All right, back to the task at hand in the book. It says to configure the div containing the address and the phone number, all right? Well, how in the world do we assign that? There's the div section right there, because it's got the div like so. And in order for me to associate that with a particular style, it asks in the book to assign that to contact. So what I do, if you remember earlier in the last video, we made a class starting with a period called contact. So I can associate my div section with the contact specs, the bold, the Times New Roman and all that, by just going inside this tag. And if I go inside this tag, I can put the word class equals contact. Spacing is not important. That's just for my readability and for your readability. You don't have to put it anywhere else because that end tag takes care of it. It just says not only do I want this division to have a special definition, but I want to have these specs associated with whatever contact is. Again, you'll see all these underscores because it's Word and it thinks it's a Word document. Now, when you get to the footer section, the next step, notice that the footer section, whoops, sorry about that. Notice that the footer section had the italics and the small there right here and it closed out over here at the end which I hope you can see on the video you've got it on your case study but if you look at the footer definition that's in our CSS style sheet and I didn't actually put it in this one uh, actually I think I maybe I did let me see if I did I did not put it in there but if you look at the directions for the footer on the previous page the footer has the font size and the italics built in so we don't need it twice we don't need it in this sheet and in the document so we just need to remove them because the CSS is handling it so basically you just go in here and just delete these tags and delete the end tags that are on the other side that also say small and italics and you go well, how does it know to do small font and italics? Well, the CSS style sheet does that for us. That's the way you do it. All right? That will take care. And, of course, what you want to do is you want to save this page. Because if you don't save it, you'll have some issues. So be sure you save that. All right? We go to the finance page. And remember, finance page had the data definitions in it. If you remember that one, I'll give you a quick recall. Uh, again, bear with me. With the finance page, it's right here. That's chapter 2. 
or the first chapter and the finance page with CSS has the yellow background the green letters and you'll notice that the the bulletin and stuff is the, the bullets are gone but the definite description list is still there and I hope you're not hearing this real high-pitched sound that's in my ear right now hope the video is still working we basically do the same thing here we're going to go inside and I'm not doing everything for you but just get you started you want to put that statement that says link inside here now if you're typing this exactly exact word students you're going to mess up I'm just giving you just some basics you're going to put the link statement right there you're following the same definitions basically you're going to go to the navigation area let me scroll up here and you're going to take out the bold same way you did before you're going to go down to the div well there's not a div in this one I'm sorry the div was in the other page you're going to go to the footer and take out the italics and the small it's the very same thing again I'm not doing every single assignment for you because otherwise you'll just watch me and copy and then you don't learn anything and I don't want that to happen now the last part you want to take care of is on the final page and that was with this definition of the wrapper ID that we did earlier now in order for that wrapper to work it says in the directions to make sure that this definition to center everything and make the width a certain width when you look at the page it says to make that contain the whole body section of the document so what you have to do there to get that wrapper to work is you go in and you have because we don't because we don't have a division specifically set up for that what we have to do is we have to go in after the opening body tag and in front of the last body tag and we wrap everything around it the whole code that we type in has got to be taken care of with that one so what I'm going to do down here well, I'll go to the top first right after the word body immediately after the word body you're going to make a div and associate that with the wrapper class so I'm going to write div with the ID associated with the wrapper that means everything after body everything in the whole web page is going to be set up with this wrapper class which means when you look at the web page it's not going to fill up the whole screen it's going to fill up 80 percent of the screen no matter how much you resize it it may not make sense right now but just pick what you can kind of like a foreign language and see what makes sense to you and what doesn't at this moment so you're going to have this one immediately follow the body class there's body right there and you want to put the tag that matches it in front of the closing body tag so you're going to have another div that will go right here so this div is associated with or paired up with this one right here you want to do this in both pages not just this one but you'll also need to take care of it on the previous page as well let me scoot up here where you can see it so I'm going to have div ID equals wrapper class spell it correctly in both places or it won't work and then it will be paired up with if you go down to the bottom of the whole page it's going to be paired right in front of the closing body tag it will be associated with the closing div tag that we have here and then when you run your page when you actually execute this particular page and I'll, I'll go through just to hopefully show you this online it's a little tricky to show online what happens with the prime properties page now when you use this CSS style what's going to happen is it's going to look at it and it's going to say okay we're going to associate this web page with the prime CSS style sheet we're going to have the wrapper class there whenever it has header right here and you see the word header and you see the word h1 what it's going to do if I look at the header in the CSS code and I don't have it right here it's going to say make that a green color instead of what it usually is remember that originally the web page had prime properties as that black color but with the CSS file overriding it now it's going to have green letters everything 
and, and it, it takes visual. It takes actually doing this page. You can watch my video many times, but until you actually apply this, it's kind of like, like I said, a foreign language or without sounding sacrilegious, almost like a faith healing service or John Belushi, Blues Brothers, where I've suddenly got this moment. Oh my gosh, I understand it. It just takes some practice. If you just imitate code just to get it done, you're not going to learn it. Hopefully all this will give you at least a head start in getting through this particular case study with CSS. And if you have any questions, the best way to handle your questions would be to send me a copy of your code. Don't just say that their thing doesn't work because I don't understand what that means. Contact me. Please don't wait until the last minute or you'll run into problems. And I hope this video has helped you out.